Thank you, and please send our thanks to Senator Davis. Our fourth recipient, Dr. John M. Folks, recently retired from his position as superintendent of Northside ISD, one of the largest and fastest growing school districts in Texas. He has been an educator for 41 years and was named the 2011 Texas Superintendent of the Year by the Texas Association of School Boards. Folks is a vocal advocate for public education. Dr. Folks, would you please say a few words? Thank you so much for this award. Uh, it means so much and I appreciate it uh, just from the fact that I am so honored to be a part of the other four recipients of this award. I can't say enough about Mayor Julian Castro and the work that he's doing in San Antonio for education. And of course, to Scott Hochberg, who certainly is one of the most knowledgeable and certainly a strong believer in public education. And of course, Wendy Davis, Senator Davis, did so much this last legislative session. But of course, most important, my senator, Senator Vandepute, and the wonderful job that Senator Vandepute does representing uh, much of the San Antonio area. Certainly, uh, it is an honor to, to receive this award, and I want to thank ATPE, uh, you do a great job. Doug Rogers, thank you for everything that you do. I appreciate you so much. David from Northside, and I know we have some Northside people here. Thank you for everything that you do. I appreciate it so much. One of the things that I think is so important is public education. And I think the reason that I get so passionate and I fight so hard for what we do in public education is because it helps so many kids. I've said many times, the most important thing in the education of a child is that teacher in the classroom. And for our legislature to come in when they didn't have to and cut $5.4 billion out of public education is absolutely unacceptable. The state... I've said this many times, the state of Texas has failed in its mission to fund public education. It is going to have to move forward, and we have to fight and we have to stand up for what we believe in. I've said this many times, America is what it is today because we put in a system years and years and years ago that every child should have an opportunity to go to school, be educated, and to become what they would want to become. That is what we have to see happening in our state. And we need people in the legislature, and we need people in leadership positions in this state that will step up and say very clearly that public education is the number one priority, and we're going to properly fund public education. Let me just close by saying this. The fight does not begin in January for public education. The fight does not begin in January to avoid additional cuts to our public schools. The fight begins right now as we all get ready to go to the polls and we get ready to vote and to elect people to the legislature and also I will say to Congress that is going to support what we believe in as teachers and as educators. ATPE is at the forefront of the fight for the survival of public education, not only in this state, but also in this nation. And I thank ATPE for what it does, its leadership, and certainly I am so honored with this award. Thank you very much. represents a large portion of San Antonio and Bayer County. A former five-term state representative, 
She is now serving her fifth term as a Texas State Senator for District 26. Senator Vanderpute currently serves as the Chair of Veteran Affairs and Military Installations Committee and is also a member of the Senate Committees on Education, State Affairs, and Business and Commerce. She served as president of the National Conference of State Legislature, Legislatures from 2003 to 2004. Senator Vanderpute, can you please say a few words? Thank you so much. I just hear that music and I want to go, hey, hey, hey. Thank you. Uh, it is indeed an honor to be here. And first of all, we need to thank our banquet captain and our servers, the people who have served us tonight, uh, and the staff here, the great media crew, to show some real Texas hospitality. I am indeed honored to be here uh, to accept this award today for many reasons. You see, I come from a family of heroes, true heroes. My mom, a 34-year public educator, choir director, music director, curriculum arts specialist. My mom is an amazing woman. My sister, who will be teaching beginning this August, in her 30th year, kindergarten. I mean, who does that? <laughs> My sister Annabelle is at Northeast. Uh, she was here in Austin ISD. And when I tell her sister, aren't you just exhausted? And she said, they're only five years old. But she has the patience and love and nurturing of those little inquisitive minds. For my brother, who spent 22 years as a middle school music teacher in the inner city, giving those students the value of a fine arts curriculum and the hope for a better life. For my sister-in-law, the third grade teacher, my niece, who teaches fourth grade, and my brother-in-law, who took his high school basketball 518 to the state finals twice, and now has given up his job as teaching to be a minister of a megachurch at Community Bible in San Antonio. He just took his ministry a little bit serious. Um, <laughs> and on Wednesday nights, they have 1,200 students, 1,200 kids in that youth ministry. <laughs> Coach John Bollinger. So I have seen my mom stay up late grading papers, orchestrating one more arrangement for that spring concert. I've seen my sister go weeks before to try to get into her classroom to make that classroom so special. And my brother scrounging around any place he could to get instruments for students because, well, the district had limited funds and those students needed those instruments. And my brother-in-law, who began and ended every practice and every game in a prayer with his, with his players in Thanksgiving. And I am sure, I know it in my heart, that all of our teachers, y'all must have a fast pass to get into heaven. <laughs> particularly in these difficult times. But I also know that as I chair the Veteran Affairs and Military Installations Committee, that I am forever reminded of those men and women who generation after generation answer the call to service to our country so that you and I can live in freedom and our boys and girls can live in freedom. And so I would ask at this time, if there are any in the audience today in this gorgeous ballroom 
who have served in our military, Army, Air Force, Navy, Marines, Coast Guard, active duty, reserve, and our state National Guard. Would you please stand up and so we can acknowledge your service to our country. All of our veterans. and those who said, how dare she filibuster? And she said, you cannot cut 5.4 billion from this budget without me talking until you gavel me down so the people of the state of Texas know what we are doing. To my friend Wendy, and thank you so much for helping her. Your pack dollars really are gonna help her in a tough race. To the wonderful Scott Hockford, who is wickedly scary, smart, one of the very few folks of the legislature who understand the intricacies and the complexity of the school finance system. I will miss him dearly, but he will still be involved. To my own mayor, Julian Castro, whose personal story with his brother, where a mom named Rosie had these two boys in inner city public schools living in the projects go to public schools where they got the best of teachers and then on to Stanford and on to Harvard Law and return to San Antonio, one will be sworn in as the next congressman from the 20th district and my mayor, Julian Castro, who will put on the ballot in November an eighth of a cent sales tax so that we can have pre-K full day in the city of San Antonio for every child that doesn't meet the requirements of the state. Those are my leaders. And what can I say about the rock star of education, my dear friend John Folks? <laughs> Thank you for just being you. And understand how difficult it is for someone like me to say from a guy from Oklahoma, you are marvelous. You are wonderful. <laughs> Dr. Folks will be involved in those little litigations that were happening all through school finance. We need you. We wish you well. And stay in the fight with us. You see, it takes an entire village to raise that child. And I'm here to tell you that it's the team. It is all of us. And the team that makes a difference in the Texas legislature. You just don't know how blessed you are to be members of ATPE. Your incredible reputation at the state capitol, led by your team. I can't tell you how many hours, it's 1 or 2 a.m. and your folks are in the workrooms with us trying to figure out, getting the amendments ready for tomorrow. You guys have no idea how hard they work and they never give up. To your incredible team. very contentious, but sometimes toxic. We've been weathering a storm for years now. A storm that's been raining and been beaten down on public education. But the perfect storm may not be here yet. You see, more cuts have been proposed even next session. Some very small-minded groups that pride themselves on the amount of cuts we've done. Not even an apology. Not even, oh, the state was in such dire straits and we are so sorry to have cut public education. No, these little-minded people boast about their cuts to public education. Boast about the $4 billion in formula cuts. Boast about the cuts to TEA. And you see, in their little minds, their most important thing are the report cards that they give members of the legislature. And they grade on how far you can cut. 
You see, they're more impressed with their little report cards. And unfortunately, some of my colleagues are more concerned with their little report cards from these groups than they are about the report cards and the students of the state of Texas. And it is where their priorities have gone wrong. In fact, one of the spokesmen for this group, I, I, I had my, my staff look this up, because I said, oh no, they could not be saying this, said the message we want to send with the revival of this coalition is, and he was talking about this coalition that has a cuts only mentality, is that it wasn't the end, that last session was just a good start. I'm so sorry that Governor Perry rolled out his five point Texas budget compact that includes opposing any new taxes or any increase or closing corporate loopholes, cut agency budgets, as well as continuing to not use the rainy day fund. It's for a rainy day. It's for when we can't make ends meet. It's so that we can fund our enrollment in our public schools. And so in the name of efficiency and local control, I think that the legislature there will be some who will file legislation to again create vouchers, or as now they call them, have you heard the new terminology? Tax credit scholarships. Because they know that people in the state of Texas oppose vouchers. They know that, and so they have to call them something else. And you know, all the other stuff. Well, I only have one thing to say about that. And I look to the Founding Fathers, Benjamin Franklin, who said the only thing more expensive than education is ignorance. You think education costs a lot. Wait till the next generation of students don't meet their potential. They don't get that quality education. They don't get those good jobs. They don't have that per capita income. So now I tell you that I think that storm is brewing. But I offer you that there's just, there's not an I in team. It's all of us. And it shouldn't be about R versus D at all. Because in public schools, there is no R versus D. There are just students and teachers and dedicated staff. And so let's join on that team. Let's fight for our schools. And I know that the people in this room will lead that charge. Thank you for this honor, and thank you for continuing to pull together your resources to help those get elected who get it, who understand that our state can do so much better, that our students deserve better, and that the chief economic generator in any Texas town and community and big city is a child who's had a great education. Together, I know that you and I are going to be on this grand ship this next legislative session, and we're going to weather that storm. And together, we're going to block the floods of that anti-public school policies such as vouchers. And together, we're going to shelter, and we're going to protect those children, our school children. We're going to protect them. There's much too much at stake. And I really believe that it takes a team. So thank you for indulging me tonight. I want to thank my mom especially. When I was growing up, my, grand my grandmother only had a third grade education, but she was very, very wise. And uh, she always said, she always had these little Mexican bichos, these little pearls of wisdom. And she used to say, El que sabe que no sabe sabe algo, which means if you know what you don't know, you know something. <laughs> but we live in a really complex world. And we don't know what event will happen across the world that will change. But what we do know is that the best future Texas can have is to have great teachers in great schools with every child having the ability to get that first class education. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you for this honor, and thank you for honoring my friends as well. Gracias.